So what we can do, well, what we should always do is to get only one way of accessing the code uh, in our functions. Um, one of it is through a function parameters. Um, you should never really like let it be injected from somewhere else. Like you should never use any require in here or anything. You should just use parameters in order to do it. And then the second thing is to use constructor. So there is a reason why in Angular you have dependency injection. It's a very powerful mechanism that allows you to put more things in your code. So how can we actually utilize that? Well, let's start with a test, a failing test, and then move gradually. So what you really so you see here you have like an import like a configure test module. What you need here is a provider. In this providers, you will say, okay, I would like to provide something I will call the GitHub URL. And then well, what will I use? Well, I will use a value because it's just a simple stuff. This is there are many ways of actually doing this, um, but this is not the course of how to provide data in a dependency injection in Angular. You can just go to Angular.io and read more about it. Um, so the value, well, what's the value? This is really important to get this right. You want to provide something that's going to be used here. And what we want to use here in the test environment, you want to use the path server setup. So in here, you want to say HTTP localhost 8100. So this is just for the visibility. Normally, I would like make sure I don't repeat myself over and over again, like here and here. I would just like um, make it more robust, but I just want you to focus on this one thing. How can we provide stuff? All right, so when we, when we provide this, I think this would not really blow. Yeah, um, it, is, it is quite okay, um, except that you're not really calling this because you're calling the GitHub. So what you could do is to, you know, um, fail or like not calling the any of your methods. But it's pretty simple what to do. So what you need to provide here is the private, um, let's call it GitHub URL, which is a string. And then in here, you want to say this GitHub URL. Let's see if this still works. Well, hey, there we go. Like your testing module sort of like dude I don't know what's that like I, I, I really don't know I know you want to inject some sort of a string but I have no idea what you try to do well what we try to do is to actually inject the token so what we should say is that because Angular now can't like magically map the word github URL to this constant so what we should do is tell that this is an actual injection of this token like the representation of that token and here we go now we're passing so just to like you know in test you never really know uh, about the false positive so let's let's manipulate it on purpose just to make sure it works well we make sure it doesn't work so we really yeah sure so it will not fake Cool, now we do the injection pattern. And now, now you might be thinking, okay, like, where does it come from? What, what I like to do is to create app.config, and it's really basic, you can read it on angular.io. The idea is that you have those special objects or strings that you want to inject in your classes, especially in services. You just go ahead and define it, and then you have to wrap it around injection token. Then you provide the type, and then it just gives them name um, and then and then whenever you use this one also in the providers here in your app modules you want to do the same as you did in test so you want to say github url but in this situation when i'm not in the test i want to provide the github url from environment file 
So an alternative would be to create a new configuration in Angular.json just for the test, but I find it anti-pattern. Like you, why would you do it? Like you can only do it. You can also do it here. Just replace the token. You're a lot more maintainable, and you don't need to create extra environment that's gonna have different build configuration than your, uh, let's say, production or whatever or your local. And it's just cleaner. You know, okay, that sort of like, um, let me just run it just for the last time to make 100% sure it all works. But that sort of like concludes the parts of about the infrastructure. So, what we have learned is that we can use contract driven testing using Pact in order to uh, make sure our uh, contracts are in sync with the backend. Uh, you can use Pact for more stuff. You can also use it for the staff server. So you can technically parallelize development between the backend and the front end. So it's not like I have this backend endpoint that needs to be done first. No. Um, and then it's pretty much done. Um, yeah, but stay tuned. There's going to be more cool stuff coming next.